This is a special map weavers meeting uh, Tuesday, May 17th. So you're just talking about harvesting, Vincent. Yeah, thanks, Pete. So yeah, I was talking about uh, specifically the Catabot uh, in this one of the one of the design uh, constraints it has right now in Mattermost is um, it only starts cataloging messages as soon as you add it into a channel. Um, and also there's a chance, right? Um, so right now it's not working because we like rebooted the channel. So we probably have to change the, I think it just requires us changing the one setting that we did last time. Um, but what I'm working on right now, which we just got to work with Discord is um, you just type like command import private and then it'll um, go through the channel and import all the past messages and then and find the links and catalog those. Um, and so that's, uh, I'd like to see if we can get that to work for, for Mattermost as well, if Mattermost allows it. Um, Mattermost, the, the API will let you grab past messages, yeah. Okay, there's, cool. Then there's the Catabot code, which I don't know how it's set up. But. Yeah, I think uh, the main difference will be the way that Discord gives the path messages is like a map. I'm not even sure if you're familiar with that. It's like a, no. it's an interesting format. Um, I hope Mattermost will be uh, <laughs> the same. But yeah, I, that's that's something that's kind of on the on the horizon. But um, yeah, in terms of harvesting, I think. The, the other thing that we can talk about that's related to the Catabot is right now how it's designed, it only listens for links in a channel. So if we wanted to set up a channel that was like the open loop tracker channel, and anytime someone posted something in there, or like a channel for tasks, and, and anytime someone posts in there, we wanted to like catalog those into a database, um, Right now, by design, it's only listening for links, but I can see the use of, um, you know, having the ability to catalog messages that are not just links, um, like something like a task or something like a open loop um, that you might want to like, you know, catalog into, I guess what we're talking about is similar to like a ticketing system for <laughs> the meta project, right? Yep. Although I think the the open loop tracker was just well, at least what I was was I what I was thinking we were talking about was just a tracker for map weavers itself, which of course you know whatever we do, uh, hopefully Meta Project can use too, and and other projects. Yeah, I definitely think we should start with creating the open loop tracker specifically for the map weavers projects and tasks or open loops um but yeah the intention would be um if it's something that yeah if it's something that would be useful more broadly then um, i'm happy to put some time and energy into helping you know create some tooling that can automate things for us yep can i um i wonder if a useful way to do this is uh just by the hashtag a uh, symbol, it's not used often, I think, in conversation, unless, yeah, maybe sometimes there is references Mat to other hashtags or something. Mattermost um, actually recognizes uh, hashtags. It, it will um, automatically link them to a uh, hashtag search. Ah. So if you put hashtag MetaProject in a Mattermost channel, it'll actually link you to all the other MetaProject I'm, I'm just thinking like if it would be a uh, hashtag uh, goal, hashtag to do, hashtag yeah. all of that. And then we agree on which ha hashtags to use, maybe even uh, matter most wide even. I don't know if that's meaningful in the long run. It doesn't matter that much now, I guess. Um, but that might be an easy way to then collect it as well and to get overview. Because if that's also an easy search to matter most, then maybe that's... Maybe you can even get an overview if yeah. in Mattermost itself. Yep. So as soon as we start uh, harvesting anything besides links, um, we're also going to end up with 
you know, figuring out what the, well, trying to define a syntax and then helping humans use the syntax. The only disadvantage is when people use hashtags as in common speak, like, oh, have you seen about hashtag da da da? And then that also gets a reference, which isn't necessarily a problem. You could also filter out, I guess, certain ones that are not yeah. defined or something. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, so, something else Meta Project does. Jordan uses the single square brackets, um, and then Markdown uh, links use double square brackets, and we're going to be using Markdown in in various places. Hmm. Mattermost understands Markdown, but it doesn't understand links. But it doesn't do anything bad with them either. Yeah. Oh, in Markdown, double brackets is because I use that in. It's it's uh, uh, the the basic matter, uh, Markdown standard doesn't have wiki links, um, but okay. it, it does have regular um, web links, um, and then Markdown the Markdown wiki de facto standard is to use double square brackets for a link. Okay, yeah, and then uh, between normal brackets is a title, I guess, or not. Um, so a web link is like uh, what single square brackets. Um. Yeah. Anyhow, um, the I think that the it's it seems to be a good idea to use hashtag. Um, is that something yeah. we agree on now? That that might be the best way to collect information because then it's an it's the easiest filter. Yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah. The, the, I agree with using hashtags, but not exclusively for, for everything. Mm. Um, but yeah, at least I guess how I kind of, um, would advise using a, a hashtag would be anything that's a kind of like a topic of, of conversation. Um, but when it's something that would require some other type of action, like if we were to differentiate between um a task or like an open loop um i think a hashtag is good for um like filtering across hundreds of open loops or tasks um but like i would use something else to differentiate what it that the type of message like this message is an event or this message is an, a job post or a um a task uh the example that I, that I'll use to just show at least uh, mm -hmm. with Catabot how how this works is um, it recognizes um, this is a this is the dashboard of like the output, um, but basically if you put a hashtag on any message um, that has a link, it will add this um, like these tags here so like fashion, food, social, uh, wearables. Um, and then, um, this is the channel. So like within the channel and a channel could also be a topic, right? So like within the channel blockchain, you might have the, you know, um, disruption as a hashtag. Um, I have an, another tag, which is related to how emojis are stored. Um, and that's the, like, it's called like a type, I call it a type tag. Um, so like an article or a tweet, um, the cool thing with emojis is if you type in like emoji, if you type in semicolon book or sorry, sem colon book colon, this will in most messaging platforms, um, actually turn it into like a little book emoji. And so uh, the cool thing about the emoji is like an emoji it usually represents a, like a type of thing. Like, you know, there's like books, ships um videos people um so the emojis are also a cool way to add like a different type of tag that's also visual um so it's easy as you're scrolling through to like pick out the emojis um and it corresponds with uh yeah what i, what I would call like a, a type or a type tag so yeah i don't know if i could actually um let me try to screen share discord and show you what i'm talking about eric 
I think I understand, but it's uh, the tricky part is then you have to understand, or, or it's always the same expression. I, it's always underlying as a text, I guess. It's always the same text. It's media or yeah, uh, article or um, yep. yeah, I get it. I think and you could make your own emoji, but yeah, it's kind of cool because it gives you like mm -hmm. a list of like predefined ones. So like, or yeah, bookmark, like yeah. article or yeah, video, video game. Um, obviously there's some that aren't captured. Like I use door for an opportunity. Um, and does it, yeah, that's another, does it like, combine hashtag and, and emoji? Does it combine or not? I, I don't know if it's meaningful, but. Yeah, you can combine. Um, yeah, combination of hashtags and emojis for sure. Okay, um, and uh, what makes most sense right now, like the kind kinds of data that we want to be tracking in, uh, is it? Are we mainly focused on the channel of uh, the Meta project, or is it broader, or? Or are we really saying, okay, this is about the meta project and what kind of information do we want to filter out? Is that the question right now? What we're focusing on? <laughs> that long pause of silence. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would start, I would just start doing stuff and see what happens. Hmm. I mean, in general, we're trying to define, I think, uh, whatever we want to call them, good practices or protocols that teams could use and teach to other teams that could be applied to multiple projects, right? So, so that's kind of the focus, Pete, and then we're wanting to get a little basic program of action together that we could start I have applying. A, I have a good question there. I think um, there's threads. Can you recognize threads in some way, a conversation threads, and then like if you see oh this conversation thread is important i need to follow it up i'll add the um, open loop uh, tag or something hashtag and then um that whole does the whole thread somehow get tagged then is there a way to do that because th the one way to do that is to edit a message that's part of the thread or the message itself but i can't can only do that for my own messages so if i want to track something that I didn't create. How, uh, or I want it's, to. It's technically, <clears throat> I think it's technically possible to do that. Yeah, I I have to say I'm I'm skeptical that, that we're going to get anything particularly useful <laughs> besides uh, okay. maybe kind of rough, you know, rough categorization of stuff. Rough, rough you know. Well, and, what's helpful um, for me, if like what I could do, for instance, is I could go over all the messages in the um, in the in the MetaMost chat for, for the Meta project and see, okay, which are the, all the open loops? And I, just by clicking a certain emoji or something, then it easily gets uh, tracked. Um, emojis it's... are added as metadata to a message, right? They're not part of the message itself. So that's uh, different. That's true in MetaMost, yes. Although you can put an emoji, you, you can add a reaction to a message, which is what you're thinking about. You can actually put an emoji inside a message too. Right. One is if you're the author of the message. The other one is if then, you're responding then to it's... Well, you could add a reply to a message that's a emoji in the message. Then emojis give more options then because otherwise you'd need to be the author of the message unless you can't really track it anymore. Uh, a reaction emoji, yeah. That's yeah. true. And... Um, whew. It's hard to make that. Yeah, uh, I think I guess check marks and goals, they all have clear emoji. Yeah, they're, those are clear ones. I'd have to see through the library, look through the library and see which kind, kind of, of text. In my experience, um, something like Mattermost, uh, any chat system is going to be, it's kind of the, a bunch of interleaved conversations and stuff. Mm -hmm. And in so in my parlance, harvesting makes sense like collecting stuff and then tagging stuff up as you collect it is good but then there's still you need a step of composting it you need a step of you know separating the wheat from the chaff uh in a in a whole thread and turning that into 
a task or something like that. Mm. So, yeah, I, I think we can help help ourselves by teaching people, you know, to use a little bit of, of extra markup and then using a little bit of extra markup ourselves. And that won't be enough. It'll it'll need a, another step before it becomes better signal. So, which so is fine. Keep... But then, okay. Go, okay, go, go ahead, for Eric. it, June. No, you too. You no, I was just gonna. I was gonna ask. Um, uh, Pete, you seem to have a, a reasonably clear idea of this after thinking about it for a long time. Could mm -hmm. you could you walk me through like from kind of inception to end, like what you what you would see as the flow? Um. Uh. Sure. Uh, so I, it might, it, I, I'll, I'll switch over to another thing that we could be doing the same, same stuff to is, uh, zoom, zoom chats. Okay. Um, so I'll switch over to zoom chats, I think, cause that's a little bit more concrete for us. Um, a little bit less abstract the mattermost conversations are a little bit abstract. Um, so during a zoom call, people will be chatting. Um, you'll get people doing uh, kind of, I'm, I'm trying not to use a, a word that's going to sound, uh, you, you get people doing messy conversation, right? Uh, human conversation. So you'll get people replying to another person. You'll get people, rep, you know, saying at Pete or at Peter. Um, maybe they'll, maybe they'll just put Peter colon, something like that. They'll misspell names. They'll, they'll do different signaling stuff. Um, maybe you'll see them using emojis. Um, you'll see uh, a couple interleaved conversations going on in chat, and all of that relates to what's going on in the uh, in the the video. Um, and it may may or may not be directly related. Um, I'll I'll do a thing where I'm looking up um, references and things like that. So I'll put a sometimes I'll put a, a web page title and then a, a link or something. That might happen five minutes after the actual mention in the in the channel. Um, something that we've thought about a little bit uh, is um, having people tag uh, a moment. It's like, oh wow, Judy said something amazing. Uh, so if we put hashtag, you know, harvest this or something like that in the chat, um, we could have a, a a thing that helps the next next set of processes work better. Um, so. So for me, there's there's stuff that goes on, um, and then there's harvesting, uh, which is taking the raw material of stuff and and actually capturing it at least. Uh, and the more you can capture, um, the better, kind of. Uh, so Catabot harvests links right now, um, and um, harvesting is something where you're trying to grab the good stuff and stash it and keep it safe, archive it. Um, but the, then there's a step after that, which is composting. Um, all the stuff that you've harvested, kind of like going out in a garden and just grabbing you know, everything, leaves and grass and dirt and birds and whatever, you put that in a big bucket. And then that's great. And an archaeologist could come along later and say, oh, wow, look at all the stuff that was in the garden, you know, on, on May 17th. This is awesome. But either the archivist much later or um, somebody the next day or two needs to sort through all of that stuff and do some composting. They need to say, OK, I'll put the birds in one bucket and I'll put the leaves in another bucket and I'll put the fruits and vegetables in a, in a third bucket. Um, and then they might add, add extra understanding to that, uh, you know, and maybe they'll make a count of how many carrots and how many potatoes and how many, um, apples they found, you know, as they were the composting. Um, and then they can add that to a database or whatever. Um, uh, another thing that can happen in that process towards the end is what I call journalism, telling a story of what happened, you know, um, so. There's a difference between composting to just kind of more data, uh, enriched data, um, and uh, so and making a chart of you know this week we found 16 carrots, last week we found 12, the week before that we we found 18. Um, 
that's a kind of raw data, a map of what was going on. But then um, a narrativiz narrativization of that or a journalism of that is, you know, hey, this, this spring was a great spring. Uh, we saw very few carrots harvested in the, in the first part of the spring, but then we got a lot of rain and the carrots blew up and it was awesome. We, we made a wonderful harvest of all these gentle carrots. Um, so that's, that's a kind of a, you know, sense making on top of that later um, in a way that makes sense to many people that, that wouldn't be able to look at a chart and see the, the stories within it. So the composters especially are the, are the people that, that have a rich understanding of this, the stories that they tell themselves as they're trying to make sense of what's going on um, in, out of all the harvesting. Thanks, Pete. Yeah, that was most helpful. And then, I, I, sorry, sorry. okay, go ahead. That's it. I was going to say I would add a just a step before um, harvesting. I would add a like a <laughs> like you tag fruit with a sticker to identify what it yep. is and make it easier yep. to, to harvest it. I would add a tagging step before harvesting, um, which is kind of yeah, which will determine what affordances you have later on in that process. Yep. Um, I, I've been thinking of that as, as pre-harvesting, um, uh, setting up the conditions for good harvesting. So if you didn't have a chat channel, then you wouldn't be able to harvest it. Um, if you can convince people to chat into a persistent channel rather than a, a transient channel like Zoom, then you're setting yourself up for better harvesting. Um, setting up um, a note a notes page is another way of harvesting during a meeting that you know you can either decide to do or not do. Teaching people how to tag, um, what different tags mean, um, uh, so you can set yourself up for a better, easier, and better harvesting um, by doing some pre-harvesting setup. Mm -hmm. And then, okay, yeah, and so then before that pre-harvesting. Uh, there's like whatever we want to call that, but the sewing, <laughs> but there, the actual process of dialogue, like the actual process of just conducting life, like in, in how you create the social spaces and interaction that lead to good things. It, so that, and then you and Wendy, I think, have done some work on thinking through what that might be like for a group to slow down and try to. Yeah. How, how long one did we want to do this meeting, but I, really, uh, I don't know how much time we imagined. Um, I, I scheduled 90 minutes, but it, it can be whatever. Because I, I'd, I'd love to have enough time for the open loop thing. Uh, and I don't know when to start that. Um, it's, it's a good question. Are there um, are there things that we need to more things that we need to accomplish talking about harvesting um, or or not? <laughs> Let's talk. I'd, I'd love to go one step further. So uh, we have the, the composting and the journalism. And then we can imagine those going out on a regular basis for I guess different calls will be higher value than others the highest value calls, we could imagine that it would be worth like doing this on a regular rhythm so that people were staying totally in the loop with what's there. And then, and then it's like a, maybe another set of processes that operationalize that into available actions or potential projects or whatever, right? Yeah. Have you, have you thought through that? Like how, how you go from let's say composted data that has had a story told about it to like, uh, it's, it's almost what I viewed, like what I, I think we were calling something like a generative commons that that composting gets deposited in and hopefully start green shoots start coming up out of it uh, that are then cultivated. And so you can follow something through from like inception and dialogue through the composting into the generative commons to where a team's acting on it and we're, excitedly seeing what it grows into um i that that would make a good diagram i like the diagram um, this <laughs> yeah. is similar to to what eric was saying um about somebody essentially doing composting going mm -hmm. through the conversations in in a channel and tagging them 
which is kind of a composting thing, and then um, grabbing the open loops, right, and putting the open loops into the open loop tracker. Um, I think um, I think that the process of of turning the raw material of meetings and discussions into I think it's actually not post composting. It's actually, or post journalism, especially, it's more um, a, a special kind of composting. Um, so somebody will will be going through a Zoom meeting. Um, uh, Wendy M is really good at this. Um, she's she's watching a Zoom meeting, and she, I don't think she's done it into open loops, but she could very well. She she does different kinds of collect harvesting composting kind of in the moment and. Um, so, so it could be that during a call, uh, somebody is essentially composting into the open loops tracker or composting into the projects tracker or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's a separate thing. Um, uh, or, or, uh, you know, a, a compliment to composting. It's a special kind of composting basically. Yeah. I'd like, yeah, I'd like to to add to that unless you have anything to say, Jordan. No, no please. So, just to give an example of what Pete was talking about, like Wendy's kind of harvesting, um, what we ended up doing was using uh, what Bentley uh, made, which is the Zoom Chat Easy Reader, um, and let's see, I don't know. I know I have that in the Map Weavers group. So how it works is you take a, um, a chat file and you hit submit, and then it will split the data up into um, like different formats. You could hide the message or the, the names or the timestamps. Uh, we took this and we imported it into the Airtable because then it kind of gives you a, a database instead of just a text file. And so, that was what Wendy used to um, create. So yeah, this was the list, the database of messages. So this was each message with the person who posted it, the timestamp and the text. And then Wendy went through and like tagged all these like, comments, questions, links. So I imagine tagging things as tasks or open loops would be pretty easy to do on top of this as well. And then um, we took the kind of like, uh, curated list of like those messages um, and when you put them into another table called contributions and so these were like concepts research sources or projects that are then linked back to the multiple messages because a, a lot of these um, things like for example planetary care had um, you know about 15 20 different messages connected to it and so linking the messages around a specific open loop because sometimes one message is not the open loop. The open loop is actually <laughs> six or seven messages. And so um, just to kind of reiterate in terms of with this diagram, um, this is the pattern that I've noticed across um, like how kind of data is stored. So like events have, you know, like for example, a Zoom or um, Google Meets, which have like a chat with messages. Um, and those messages sometimes have links in them. Uh, then something like, you know, like there's platforms like Mattermost, which have servers like CSC, and then which have channels like Lionsburg Town Square. And those channels also have messages and messages sometimes have links. So there's like an overlapping kind of structure here. Um, and that's, how we in the meta um in the map weavers meta project directory we kind of split it to like messages um and then contributions as like a curated form and then there's also um i don't think we have a a, a links list here but we would probably split separate that um and that's how catabot is structured too it captures all the messages coming in so like it'll say like you know uh, this link a conference happening and then it makes a new record for just the link, which has all the data connected to that link. Um, like, you know, like the meta title description and stuff like that. 
Um, and the reason for this is that one message can contain multiple different links. And so that's just the structure, the high level structure of the, the data types that at least I've noticed and um, kind of synthesized um, over, over doing the cataloging and harvesting. It's like there are messages, messages can have one or more links. Um, and then you might want to cluster messages together to create some sort of curated, curated topic or contribution. And the same I mean, can, ha can happen with the transcriptions and stuff, I guess. Yeah. Yep. Um, so messages are the are are messages. There are the things that I would say are being harvested. I also call that evidence sometimes. Um, and then a thing like an open loop is not something that you you can't turn a piece of evidence directly into an open loop. Um, the open loop curator or the open loop composter has to say, um, you know, we we need to uh, we need to make an open loop tracker is one thing that we curated out of the, the past meeting, right? Um, but you, you want to have uh, you want to have that evidence, and you want to be able to say you want to you want to be able to make a new open loop. Um, uh, you know, we need a we need a project that's do, helping us do regenerative agriculture or something like that, and then that open loop uh, can point to different pieces of evidence, and some of the evidence might be at for might be against. Um, might be related somehow, but but not directly for or against. Is it okay if we about switch to the open loop tracker thingy, or is there still some other open loops? <laughs> <laughs> what other what other key terms are there, Pete? Um, evidence what what uh, what other have, have we pretty much covered it um there's a connection to uh sense making emergent events um we did some work there um collecting evidence and then doing sense making we called it in that in that um uh, fjb also had a great call this week about um argument uh argument types argument mapping and things like that. Um, so pros and cons and then comments on the pros and cons. And um, there's a bunch of argumentation types and argumentation theory that's, um, that's super cool. But yeah, I, I, we're, we're probably getting close to the good enough. Yeah, for, for me, it also yeah. links into each other, though. It's, it's part of the yeah. same uh, process, I would say. Um, so, yeah. yeah, so I'm thinking, so, so I think that makes a lot of sense in that argumentation because it's, it's almost like out of, so I like this issue, this thing of evidence that you're saying, then that, that leads to a separate action that's an open loop, whatever, but that, that has subcategories like an open loop could, could be a proposal that somebody's making or whatever, you know, yeah. different, different types of things. But then what I've seen, what's happened on every time I've worked on is you end up with way too many to-dos and you can't do them all. So then you get into the backlog, right? Yeah. And then I guess that's where intelligent discourse or dialogue or argumentation about what should be prioritized and why then, then informs what gets acted on in a prioritized manner. Yeah. So another, another word, more commonly used than open loops is actually issues or bugs. Um, and then there's a curatorial process of looking at a bunch of essentially evidence and crafting issues, well-formed issues or yeah. bugs or, or open loops. And then that's similar to, but a little bit different from um uh doing project development um understanding you know here's a here's a bunch of issues that we've seen all of these issues we could gather together into into a project 
that accomplishes the resolution of many of those issues. And then that project might be a sub project of another, another project. Yeah. Uh, and I, there's a, there's a weird thing. Most, um, it's, it's pretty common for people to be able to, to, to recognize issues or recognize open loops and talk about them. It's harder for some, it, it, it's usually a specialist who can gather a bunch of issues into a larger thing like a, a project or even make a, a well-crafted issue statement out of a bunch of observations of things. Yeah. You know, that, that was so in my best understanding of like an approximately good organizational operating system, we, we call them issues. Um, mm -hmm. And we had that requirement that if an issue was going to be discussed, <clears throat> someone needed to champion it and, and do the work of putting together a well-crafted issue statement that brought the group yeah. up to their best understanding. And it, it saved, I mean, tremendous amounts of time to have one person go through that, that yeah. process and to teach people how to do that. Um, and then- Did, did we, you find that, that people could learn how to do that? I found it was difficult. Um, and it was kind of a matter of, in, in that organization, I was paying people. So ultimately <laughs> it came down to like, um, do we as a leadership team want this to be an absolute that like it, it? And so we had some exceptions, like you want someone to run in and scream that there's a fire, right? Um, but we were trying to get there. Um, we were trying to get there. It seemed important. The, the um, when, when I've seen that process worked, it's because, so uh, if we talk about a, a guild of specialists, um, you know, product manager or, um, or the person who writes issues or whatever, that seems like a specialization that most people yeah. can know about, but don't do well. Um, right. so, so you want a guild of specialists who are good at turning raw observations and raw thoughts into well-formed issues and a similar kind of specialist to take a, a group of issues and turn that into well-formed projects. Yes. yes, yes. Okay, so, the, so, wait. okay, so hold on, just real quick before we go. So, so I think what we're proposing, I, I agree with you. There's this issue of these certain specialties that we've seen as hard for people without the right personality type and skill set to do. So let's say, um, let's say that I had an issue, but I wasn't trained. I could, I could contact, you know, Pete, the specialist and say, Pete, here's my best attempt at this. Could you help me fashion this up? Cause I'd like to pr present it to the group or whatever. So it, it could be like maybe even kind of a, a coaching type role or, you know. Yeah, I, yeah. Um, I, it, it ends, I've, I've seen it, it coaching, coaching is a good way to do that. Um, and you do want, but it, but it always has ended up to me to, to seem like somebody who's good at it does it. They actually do the work of it. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So kind of in the same way that when, when people are having a meeting, um, if you can teach them to cooperate with the harvesters um, and have a, have a sociology, have a, have a custom culture, a culture of assisting with harvesting, it's kind of the same thing that you want people to assist with create, crafting good issues and you want people to assist with crafting good project tasks and, and goals and things like that. But it's, it's a different kind of person. It's a librarian kind of person who does that librarian curator editor kind of person who actually can do it. Um, and it helps a lot if everybody knows what the process is mm -hmm. and helps back and forth, you know, but. I don't know if it's a question for now, but I would be interested, Jordan, what you used because you had really huge projects going on and what your kind of um, workflow was, how, how you work with tasks, how you work with projects. I'll, I'll give you a 60 second overview and then we could go deeper or switch, but. Uh, it, it's basically, I adapted, I studied a bunch of different organizational development books like, like Traction and Scaling Up and um, things out of Harvard Business Review and whatever, like Peter Drucker, like how just on organizational 
operating systems. Um, I then studied um, like lean integrated program delivery um, and like just lean theory in general, like out of operations and MBA stuff. And then I kind of just blended it together into something that could fractally apply at every level from a project team out to the organization. Um, mm -hmm. And I, and so I've got like- What kind of document, what kind of document or app or whatever did you use? Generally? Used, well, and we had a company called, um, it, was, it was a network of different apps, um, but it, it, where we had it was in a loose, almost like what I think we want, where each team could customize it, but then there was there was data flow up and down to set criteria or interfaces between teams um, that kind of work. So I, I was in the process of trying to get it all written up. I've got various documents and half stated, and then we've got a bunch of like process documents from construction. That I need to be, I need to just like adapt it all. It's just a bot. It's just. And did it include things like uh, can charts, Kanban, normal to do lists, uh, projects? All, all of that was part of it. Or... Yeah, but we, we didn't get to the point where we um, we started to use Asana to standardize something um, and mm -hmm. then connect that out to Instagram. Um, but what we found was each of the projects, you know, government agencies would require someone to, would require. P6 or Microsoft Project, or mm -hmm. one team would know how to use Microsoft Project but didn't have someone trained in P6, or they didn't like Asana. And and when when things blew up, we hadn't we hadn't got it all the way driven through. Mm -hmm. So so I think what Pete and I have talked about is you want a lot of flexibility at the group of five or six people working together to do something level, and then we want to um, define the interfaces between teams. And then, you know, work on training and whatever you want to call that good practices that teams could adopt if they don't have a better one, but have complete flexibility to meet the interface in any way you want. Is that said? Yeah. And if, if it, just to give an example, if it would all be an air table, then you can pull it out in, in many different apps, I guess, because it's very uh, easy to communicate. Uh, database system it seems <laughs> you both have more way more experience with <laughs> i i i like that idea and i i also kind of expect so so we're going to bump into people who go yeah Airtable isn't for me i have to use microsoft project or i have to use asana or i have to use p6 or i have to use jira yeah. um uh so my my supposition is that we want um, uh, that we want us to specify very simple data interchange formats. So, um, so you, you, we we were interested in knowing what open loops people are tracking, uh, what issues they're tracking. If those are different, maybe they're the same. Um, how their projects are going, what their what their projects are, and at different levels, different levels of uh, hierarchy of projects. And, um, and I, I think what that ends up doing, I think we, we I think we'll want to interchange with, um, with CSV actually, um, have everybody set up tables in Google Sheets or Asana or Jira or whatever, and be able to output uh, tables basically um, in CSV. And everybody can read and write CSV. So um, I wonder how much of overhead that is for the game. Um, it it, itself, it, it might like be a good fair idea. bit of overhead. The, the, the trick is going to be taking the schemas from you know, P6 or Jira or Microsoft Project or Catalyst and then saying, OK, we need to have that schema be generalized into you know, a, a meta project schema. Um, Okay. That defines um, project name and status and due dates and participants and things like that. And then just one more level is is like if people are just want to be aware and want to see that the thing's working and want to be a part of the dashboard to that we're rooting for, so to speak. That that's maybe a simple level of data. When we start initiating projects, 
and bundling those and then selling those, so to speak, to um, foundations or grant writers or whatever, right? Then it, then it probably, those teams that want to engage in paid organized sprints, so to speak, um, we, we may need to have a little bit more structure to those so that we make sure it reports up like really consistently and accurately on a monthly basis. And we can submit the pay ops to whoever's you know paying for them, et cetera. Yeah, which I think it would be, which reminds me, I think we should make a very simple prototype version in Airtable of the open loop tracker. And then I think the next meeting we should um, meet with Jamaica and Katie and, and see, make sure it works with open impact. Cause I'm just realizing like, that's something that they probably have focused on way more. Um, yeah, it is. I mean, we, as, as you know, uh, I was kind of, I was involved in the inception of that. And so we've had extensive discussions around this stuff and, and that's where a thing like that, it may be that you have to do a minimum amount of work in something like open impact. If you want to be part of a roll up, you know, funded type thing that's getting, and, but, but you can still do everything you want. You just, whatever level of tasks, like in P6, I don't know you guys, but you, you can make like big hammock tasks that, have you know or a project that contains a bunch of other projects and then you just kind of aggregate could report on whatever level of necessary hierarchy you need to and maybe something like open impact uh, so I, i'd love to make some progress in this and i i want to add one thing for me the like the starting page idea or something like where some place where everything's collected uh, as, as a waypointer place, like, okay, these are all the projects we're working on. This is the basic documents. This is if you are new and you want to read up um, currently and the, all the roles and stuff. So I I wonder if if we could create this kind of uh, open loop tracker and, an, and a starting page, then that starts making sense because then everybody has the same page to return to and they can see, okay, there's the open loop tracker. This is the main one. This is the one that we have for, this is our collection bucket, something like that. Is this clear enough what I'm saying? Good. Uh, Erica, I've, I've already told Jared, Jordan that you and I want to make a start page. <laughs> Online uh, well, um, so I'll follow up. I'm supposed to have a meeting with Katie or tomorrow. I don't think she responded to that last text asking me to make you and I admin for that yeah. last email. Um, so, so, so then Erica, it gets more complicated. So what you said was clear, but um, it gets more complicated because um, I think the start page needs to be super simple and then jumps off to other things. So real, like the, the next level down for me is um, somewhere on the start page, it says, here's a list of people and projects or something like that. And it points to at least two places I already know of. One of them, it points to Catalyst and another one, it points to a massive wiki um, where there's a massive wiki or a Catalyst of projects. There's a massive wiki and, or a Catalyst of people, et cetera, et cetera. So, and, and also, is there an internal start page and is there an external start page? The internal is more like a dashboard. The external is more like a getting to know thing. Or in, internal or external to meta project or each project or? Uh, to meta project to start because that's where we are right now. Yeah. Um, then... So the internal so at, at some point it's not a start page anymore right it's a whole directory of stuff you know um yeah, yeah. dashboard uh, so a dashboard yeah one thing right. that, uh, an idea that's come up is is and i don't know if this would work but a, would a miro board be a really flexible front end to create create an update like so i'm just thinking links out to Catalyst, massive, but then also you could create um, no. <laughs> Ideas. I I I think of it. A, well, I I have the same reaction. Um, uh, but 
I think if, if the meta project is going to work, we need to decentralize and federate. Um, so, so right away, it seems to me that I think, um, I think Vincent and Calist are going to be tracking projects and people. And I think um, CSC or something like it is going to be tracking projects and people separately. So I don't, yeah. I don't think we ever want to have one system of record. Um, it's at the, at the very top, Meta Project is going to say, these are, systems, these are systems we know are tracking things that are important to you. And these are the ones, and, and this is going to sound too complicated and too crazy, but I think we at least need to know about where we're going. There's, um, let me back up. There's a concept I want to convey and it's, and it's complicated and, and I can start with a concrete example. Um, uh, let me talk about open source licenses. Um, and the open source movement in general. So the deal with open source is you want to have a license, a kind of a copyright license that's not just, um, I own this and you have to make uh, a contract with me before you can use it. Open source licenses are more like, I wrote this code, I own it, you can use it under these terms, right? And sometimes the yeah. terms are kind of more restrictive, sometimes they're less restrictive. Um, <laughs> thanks, Vincent. Um, I'll try to make this pretty quick. Uh, so, so in the course of developing open source and open source licenses, different projects and different lawyers and different attacks upon, uh, upon open source projects, you want to make, you're trying to put something in the commons. So there's a, a balance between, I want to give you lots of rights to redistribute this, but I want to restrict your rights to enclose it, right? Um, or sell it for your profit and not the commons's profit. So, so in the course of, of time, there ended up being dozens of open source licenses of different strengths and weights and values and things like that. There's the very restrictive ones and the very communistic ones. And I don't mean that in, in the bad way versus capitalism. I just mean it's you know a commons-ish way. There, there are other ones, ones that are very restrictive in different ways, um, ones that are very permissive in different ways. So um, as a software developer, what am I to do? Which, which license should I pick? Because people have told me, if you pick the wrong one, you're going to make it hard for other people. You're going to make it hard for people to use your software, or you're going to make it hard for people, for you to defend your software against attacks against the commons. How do I know which one to, to use, right? So there's, um, uh, there's an organization called the Open Source Initiative. Um, they made a list of and, and they kind of kind of generally kind of own the, the cultural term of open source. So the people behind OSI are well respected in the open source community and they have weight, right? Um, so they've said, here are the list of OSI approved licenses. Um, and if you're using one of these licenses, we're thinking you're doing a good job. If you're using one of these other licenses, uh, either you've completely given the farm away or you're not even open source. We wouldn't call you open source. We wouldn't call you open source. Somebody else might, or you might, but as respected stewards of the open source idea, we can't, yeah. we can't approve. So that's one list of open source licenses. If you go over to the free software foundation, they have another list of, of what they call free software licenses. And they say, this one is free software. These are not free software. These are dangerous. These are not dangerous. So now as a software developer, not only do I have a choice of which license to use, but which certifying uh, body to listen to, right? So, and then you can imagine the next level of this is I might, as a software developer of 30 years or whatever, I might write a blog post. Hey, if you want to choose a software license, you know, these are the, the top five places where you go to see which are the best licenses and so on and so forth. Right. So that's going to happen with the meta project. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, here's, uh, here's a constitution that you know, as a, as a sovereign, which constitution do I sign up with? I don't sign up with, you know, the one meta project constitution meta project 
presumably will have blessed, they'll have created one their own, they'll, they'll have blessed a few other ones that also say, these are constitution types, which we think that you should stay away from. They're not meta project like. Um, so, uh, so same thing with dashboards and project trackers. There's going to be a thousand dashboards. There's going to be 10 that are good. They're going to be, you know, a hundred that are really, really bad. Um, there are going to be two or three where it's the meta project says, hey, if you just want to see what the dashboard is, go to Catalyst or go to, you know, this massive wiki. Here's a list of the other eight that you should look at if you want more detail or you want, you know, a different view of it. Here's, and here's the hundred that please just stay away from them. And, and whenever you, whenever anybody asks you about them, say that they're not meta project, they're bad, bad news. Mm -hmm. So back to, you know, the start page and the dashboard and the internal dashboard and the external dashboard and all of that. I think we're going to start off with there's two pointers to two dashboards, people and projects. One of them is Catalyst. Another one is Massive Wiki. Maybe another one is Open Impact, actually. Um, and, you know, it's, it's not that any of those are official, but they're, they're more in line with the meta project and you know less yeah, depending yeah, on yeah, yeah. and and they'll focus on different things right catalyst is going to have in its database things that are more more and more distant from the meta project um, and same thing with my massive wiki it's going to have or the csc massive wiki it's going to have an overlap of stuff with catalyst but each of them are going to grow apart same, same with open impact yeah okay, and, then, and then the and then the neat thing is if trying to figure out how because i look at catalyst and csc and you guys are both doing great things in service of life so i kind of go okay well so it, it's a neat patterning if we can just see it all as the same thing but then there's going to be like you're saying there's but be like that's that's one way we could use a, a another brand like if meta project is just the hashtaggy thing that we're all working on that's one way that if there is like uh that's one way we could use another brand and and then yeah. go okay and, and these things have not only done the hashtag but they've gone through the certification process and are part of this federation that is trusted enough that it shares resources and information even more freely. Uh, yeah, one thing I want to add is how important for me the start page is is because the the one click principle i don't know what else to call it but also that there's an overview and this overview is maintained and this is the one place to go to and that's that also builds trust and it builds flow and momentum with the project is that if that first page is up to date it gets clear information then i have a sense that people refer to it start using it if you already have to click twice to get to something essential it's it's going to create more and more reasons for people not to join uh, just because that's how it I works. Totally agree. How, how and it, yeah, totally agree. Technology. And yeah. I want to note the challenge there of making the information simple enough and, and mm -hmm. timely and accurate enough. There's, there's a, a there's a balance, right? Um, uh, it's, it's difficult. That's yeah, where I, yeah. I would just say I agree with the dashboard, but it's you need the information to go in the dashboard is the I think the bottleneck or yeah like writing up a one sentence summary of what map weavers is right is more of a bottleneck to having a dashboard than to putting that summary on a page. Yeah. And the same thing when it comes to yeah. defining projects and tasks and loops so like right now we have three empty. Airtable databases that are linked. That's an, but we there's not anything there to create the dashboard of how to show people the hundred foot view of what products are happening because all those are in our heads still. So yeah, I think getting the information down and then synthesizing it and going through the loops of turning it from like data to knowledge, like that's what's going to help us get to the multiple different you know. I get that. Yes, and. I've seen Sophia and uh, Wendy uh, both doing uh, also overview work already. Um, so, so those are already things that we can refer to 
from the start as, okay, these are places you can go to and look at different things. We different points of overview of what the meta project, project is until now. And then because those then exist, it makes more sense to create even more until now. I've, I've heard that Wendy did it. I've never went and see it because it somehow passed somewhere in the chat and I never remembered to look back at it. If it's part of the starting page, then I know, okay, that's where I look to see, to, to find an overview. And I think an, an all, uh, another point is also that a certain, yeah, no, that's not important now. Um, uh, shall we go into action? We, real quick. Um... Right, right on that topic. I learned from Marc Antoine progressive formalization today, um, and it was he was talking about argumentation, I think. But there's there's just there's information that is less formal and more formal, um, and mm -hmm. so especially when you're making a dashboard, you're looking for the information that's been fairly formalized. But like Vincent said, sometimes you just do not have the formalization of like what MapWeavers is, for instance. That's not a thing yet. Um, so there's there's a, a tension between freshness and aliveness and yeah. and uh, ease of use and formalization. Yeah. This is you could also say this is more on the prototyping stage. This is more on the uh, our common guidelines, which is a, a, a also a building document, but it's actually something that we refer to regularly. Uh, there's different kinds of yeah. Yep. Well, one one more comment. One more quick comment on that, and then we can we can switch. But in in this operating system we're working towards, um, we had the notion of multi-dimensional maturity indexes. Basically, call that whatever you want. But let's say that each sovereign has seven main things like kind of determine its health or its level of development. And it'll be at different dimensions on each one. Like one might be great on tech, but really low in social cohesion. Like another group might spring up and they're like totally social, socially cohesive and whatever, but they haven't structured themselves yet, right? And so maybe there's a, a way we can kind of see that uh, over time to help coach, right? That just informs coaching. If there's some kind of a self-rating or reflection process on that, then groups can identify where they need help back to Pete and like the sovereign whispers. Maybe then we can help each other climb through those levels. Okay, cool. Okay, so um, for the moment, is it okay if we start with a simple Kanban uh, for the track open loops tracker? And we can have different kinds of Kanbans, as we said last time in the map weavers on Wednesday. Jordan wasn't part of that, but um, does that make sense to start? And then some. I, I think it's. I yeah, that makes perfect sense. Um, so I think Vincent and I, where we would go with, can we have different Kanbans? It's like can we set up a simple schema in Airtable mm -hmm. and then have different views, including some Kanban views and maybe other views? So, and I, I, have, a, I have a remark there is I, I'd prefer to start with Trello. If you still need building time, then we can still use something simple if Trello at least can be imported easily into Airtable after. Or can we immediately start with using the Kanban from uh, we Catalyst can immediately right start using uh, okay. Kanban with Airtable, and we can also do things like forms, simple, simplified forms. Okay, cool. So yeah, there's like there's a uh, it's funny because Airtable has like a button that says import from Trello, but it actually uh, is just a CSV. <laughs> yeah, then it's an export and an import kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I I don't think Trello gets this anything over Airtable. Yeah, no, I but it's it's a one. It's like a manual thing that you have to do. So if you would, well, yeah. sorry, I I don't I didn't understand that. So probably if you go to Trello somewhere, you have to press export as CSV, and then you have to import I, it in an Airtable, and it's not I, a sync. It's just a. I think there's not thing. a good reason to start with Trello. Um, we can start with Airtable. Yeah, 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 for sure. Okay, let's do that. So right uh, now, I, I wouldn't even use that one. <laughs> no, <it's not> 
Um, well, Eric, do you still would you still want to see what the data looks like, or should I delete that export data to use in Trello? No, that's not necessary. Only okay. if it's necessary, it's necessary, and not, right now it doesn't <laughs> make any sense. Okay, so, yeah. so we have right now three main databases, and maybe what we could do is we can add a description for these as we go, as we feel like they're getting more defined, like you know, describe projects, tasks, open loops. Um, is it safe to say that these are the main three? Projects, issues, well, loops, yeah. and tasks. Uh, yeah. Questions is similar to issues and loops. So that's an, I think that creates kind of a, a ambiguous uh, categories there. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't mean that questions couldn't mean something for your directory, but I mean, yeah, in terms kind of, of the like Kanban, an FAQ. it could also, I would combine them then in, in one Kanban to have issues and questions together. Unless the, the questions are, so are something about something define, specific. Let's define what we're what we mean by each one of these, maybe. Yeah. So like a task is a um a time sensitive. I mean, the way that it's defined by the like scrum methodology is a, a work item given to people to complete, such as a feature that needs to be completed. Yeah, it's also a, a description for a clear a, a description for an action, something actionable. Because otherwise, you can also get ideas in there, which is tricky. I think it's it's all action related. It's logic, but that's what I've noticed. You have to make the distinction in my own experience. It's a really important distinction. I okay. agree. Ideas is in itself also something. Yep, I agree. So for projects, um, so these are some of the projects that already have tasks associated with them. Um, so these are some tasks that Wendy had added, um, which are linked to these different projects. So for example, within, um, within the project Relationship Matters, there are tasks, adjust the database structure, um, improve the UX, include and request for responses. So projects can have one or more tasks. Um, okay, tasks belong to projects, but not necessarily. Or do they always belong to a project? I think you could have a task that doesn't belong to a project. Then it's an inbox, I guess. Right, I guess, yeah, I feel like the project and task dichotomy seems pretty, I don't know if it, do you guys think it needs to be explicitly stated? That one seems the most clear to me. I think it's the issues and loops one that uh, yeah. Yeah. we could define it differently. Do you guys agree with that? Um, I'm not sure I understand the question. So maybe let's just add a description here for the project. Um, um, and, and I'm actually okay if we just get issues and loops done. Yeah, okay. Um, so I think there's a difference between projects and tasks. Um, I think we could talk a long time to try to figure that out. I also really, really want uh, projects to be able to have parents. I think we, I think we might have set that up in the structure yeah. last time. Yep. We set yeah. up parent project and related groups. Yep. Is that essentially like infinitely nestable then? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Great. And then it's a. Uh, um, Project is actually also this similar as a category then, in, in essence. Well, it, it, that no. doesn't matter. No, let's let's go, okay, let's go so, action action. <laughs> no, don't don't listen to me. Okay, so I, just I, do. I I put a loop here that Catabot isn't or an issue. Catabot isn't enabled in the Mattermost settings. 
Does that feel like a loop or a task? Uh, so, so I think the difference between a loop and a task is a loop. A loop is is kind of like an observation um, and a and a small set of evidence. It's not necessarily actionable. I really get confused with the questions there. So, could you explain? Can we put either the questions completely to the right, then I don't see them together? Or... <laughs> Unfortunately, Otherwise, I can't hide the tabs. No, that's okay. Can you just completely put, other... put the tide, yeah, tab then, all the way over? I then... can do that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, one of the obvious failure patterns is making things that aren't immediately actionable with a small action a task, because then you end up with a massive task list, but it's so, so that's so why it, it's an issue or a loop an that's loop. why it's an issue or a loop and then i something that big like enabling catabot from what you've described vincent that almost then becomes a project at a right at the right time and then you're going to execute the series of steps until it it works i guess agreed so another thing about issues is they they come at all different scales um all different levels of hierarchy or scale i guess so sometimes an issue is a very small thing, like, you know, a, a word needs to be, there's a typo and a word needs to be corrected. And sometimes an issue is like a whole big project or multiple projects. So yeah, for projects, like, like I would create a, a task that was, I don't know, um, like check the Mattermost settings um, to see if bots are enabled. And then I would link it to the project Catabot. Like that's like, I, I wouldn't create another project to say like fix Catabot. I would just make that as a task linked to the project Catabot. Does that yeah, seem right? right? Okay, so so let's go back to let's go back to the issues. And we would want this issue to be linked to like tasks right that we so like you could aggregate like five issues and say okay this is a task so the the task master would you know see okay there's a pattern there's like a bunch of issues here and then create a task and link it to those to say like we're working on this through this task right feels like it would more likely flow to a project to me i look at tasks as things that I think you need to make it free. Uh, it, it can link to either uh, because some kind some kind of issues are very large. Some are very small. If it's a small one, you don't need really a project, and it's just one basic task. So yeah, great. I, both options is better. Yeah, I mean, I think this would be. Uh, related to both the, the task and the project in this example. You could it, do issues have owners or advocates or um, like it, it, it could yeah. be. Oof, a project link could, can, can hold more pr project than one. Right. Project. Also yeah, 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 yeah. They both. Yeah. Because then you can also say once uh, you define a task as part of a certain project, then that also would update. And here, maybe no, not necessarily. Sorry, no, I didn't say anything. There, there's a few different um, relationships to people that I would say each of these tasks and loops could have. So. There's um, who posted this issue. There's yep. who is it assigned to, um, or who's you know the owner of it, and maybe who's watching it, or you know there's maybe a few types of relationships like that. Yep. Uh, in chat, I put a kind of a classic issue for software projects.
So description, what happened? Oh, what happened, what I expected to happen, okay. Sometimes, so depending on the issue, sometimes that, that matters a lot and sometimes we'll have issues that don't, they're, they're obvious. But this is really software related. It's much broader than software. So I don't mm. know if it makes sense necessarily. Like we're, everything that like, um, uh, we want to create a social culture what I happened, what I expected to happen. Mm. It's more like I think I I think well <laughs> I think it's worth worth having them as fields and not necessarily using them all the time. I, I agree that okay. But maybe there's a broader way to approach it that makes more yeah. sense, but let's figure that out gradually. That's okay. Yeah, I agree with like keeping them. I think they're helpful even some social cases like what happened, um, the map weavers met and we created an, uh, an, an issue on the what, what you... table, what I expected to happen. Uh, we wanted to create two issues, not one. <laughs> like, so yeah, you could yeah. use it for in, um, or you what could, happened in a meeting or like we didn't, we, but, we talked about, we opened 15 loops in our meeting and we didn't actually get anything done. Yeah, it could also be context. What happened? Uh, yeah context because then you can say uh, context is uh, we for our meetings we want to design a culture it could also be for our general ways of collaboration or for um, as how we relate to each other in one-on-one -on -one conversations that's different contexts and I would the... put that at what happened as well like context what happened and context i'm not sure if that as separate fields or just in the name same same field because then you can use them the um the, the purpose of the what happened and what i expected happened in in software is it's to help people structure their thinking a little bit better because the the classic way people say is it didn't work and then you're like well <laughs> what do you mean um it's like well i couldn't do the thing and it's like you know yeah. why did you expect to be able to do the thing yeah but so if if you take it we want to build a social culture that's not what happened but there's something that happens all the time yeah you know? uh, so then we need another question i guess what, what's then, the... yeah sorry we've got multiple things going but maybe it's kind of the why also of yeah. what we're creating uh, maybe you can add why as a question, what happened and why do we want this? I'm not sure. But why is this an issue? Why yeah. is this an issue? Yeah. As yeah. A, 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 and it's just two questions you can a, answer in this field. Is that uh, clear or is it is that creating confusion? I think that's helpful. Did you understand, uh, Vincent? Um, so we have name, description, what happened, what I expect to happen, and then why is what happened? Um, no, what happened, I would say what happened, question mark, and then uh, in the same phrase. So if you add it, what happened? Yeah, yeah. but can you edit what happened itself? That text oh, edit, of the main, edit, yeah. Yes, to be yeah, and then, and then, um, why is it an issue after what happened? Yeah. What's the, what should we use as our importance weighting? Um, what, what data should that be? So do you wanna use a, I think there's a few things we could, we could either use a number one through 10 or one through five, or we could use a free text and see what gets posted. Or we could use some sort of like single drop down that's like I would, I would start with, yeah, high, high, medium, low or something like that. Great. Um, mm. <laughs> Is it, oh. yeah, it's important, uh, time sensitive. Um, 
and uh, what else? Yeah, important yeah. and urgent, I would say, is two categories. And first, urgent and important, and then. Uh, yeah, there. So there, <clears throat> I agree. There's there's kind of two dimensions. One is how how important it is, and we have to teach people what that means. And then one is the uh, is the time dimension. And from what works best for me is to literally have. Um, uh, Priorities not as numbers, but really as orders, and you've got like a numbered list. That's how what works best for me, like priority number. And then you can, um, it's like some apps, some outliners have numbered lists and others don't. And for me, the ones with the number list work best because then you can clearly see, okay, what's first, this is second, this is third. And then you can also agree on this needs to happen first. That's a, and that's a different thing than how how important something is or something. It's just really the order in which something happens. So, so issues, I, I don't think issues have an order. Task. Issue, ah, no, 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 that's that's tasks. Yeah, true. You, although, no, actually not. Another, another key not. Dim dimension, I think, is whether it's, yeah. it's, um, the, the issue that Pete called blocker, but is it stopping some other team's work? Like, is somebody wait, somebody stuck or waiting on dependency? This? And yeah, is there a dependency? It's, and, and that blocker? could be, it, is that the same as, because I could see something being a blocker, but also being, so I'm almost wondering if the blocker yeah. is a yes, no, that's a separate field, right? Because you could have somebody blocked, but. Or it's like, even, it's like even, for, for, even assigned to the same as assigned to it's a person or it's a group, maybe even. Yeah. Because it's better if it's uh, defined, who are you blocking? And then you can also contact that person. You actually, to clarify why it's blocking or something. Or not? Okay, so, so you'd you'd link it. You're proposing that that's a link to a um, <clears throat> a project or a team. Pete, what do you think? Yeah, it's hard to figure this one out, and it, it needs to be tested. I would say in in real life. <laughs> so you could have like blocking yes or no, maybe a second field that's a link to whatever is getting blocked. Either way. Yeah, if anybody's gonna ever use that, that's my second question. But it's a, it's it's possible. Yes, I discovered this was really critical. Like uh, for for me, that was one of the things I cared about most every day was whether I was screwing up anybody's ability to do work. Yeah. Cool. And in terms of urgency, what do we think the uh, the option should be? Um, yeah, yesterday it could be like I, I've seen this done as yep. like P zero one two three. Like it should be done today. It should or yeah, like maybe that's better for a task. Like today, week, month backlog. Is is that the right? Yeah, I guess urgency. Is it review also? I'm not sure. Like, and that's what they use also in um, OmniFocus. It's like you have reviews now and then, but and also in the GTD methodology. But I, people doing that actually, it could be meaningful, but I'm not sure. No, I don't think people use it. Fairly urgent is very unclear, I would say. Or that's. <laughs> It sounds like, oh, I don't actually have to focus on that at all. That, that's what happens in my to-do list, at least. <laughs> Fairly urgent can wait. <laughs> <laughs> is urgency the right, is that the right? I, I, I would say important. Term? I would say urgent, important, because very and fairly, it's not something you can really define clearly and also changes over time. Um, I had due date and. Well, for an issue, should it have a due date? I guess. I know. Uh, no. True. Yeah. 
uh, it should probably have a field that says um, it's uh, oh, so it hasn't been this. triaged and it has been triaged. But maybe that's yeah. open and closed. But also the date when it was posted needs yeah. to be there. I mean, the urgency could also be a yes or no. It's urgent or it's not. I, I would use uh, low, medium, high, actually. Uh, mm. That's fine for now. Um, but also important Pete, and urgent Pete. is something else. Yeah, we have two different ones. So Pete, you just said an interesting comment on triage. Ah, okay. Um, because sometimes there's like something that's actively bleeding, and those are the kind of things you want somebody like assigned to, you know. Um, yep. And then you can triage something without that buys time without solving the issue, right? Like, yeah. I, so so issues are just like open loops, right? And then yeah, yeah. And then you need one or two or four, a few people to triage them and turn them into, you know, tasks and projects and things like that. So okay. and I, I was also thinking triage, like sometimes these things are associated with, um, sometimes they're called causing problems in the severity. relational field yeah. too, right? Yeah. And so it's like that triage could be, yeah, making sure that everybody's cool. Nobody's going to like freak out and, I, it, the, it turns the act of triaging turns it from a, a presenting case into a, a project, right? Um, or a backlog item or whatever, right? Yeah. Okay, Vincent, so, you got to run? Yes, I do. All right. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. I'll talk yes, to you later. Yeah. I think we should present this uh, next MapWeavers meeting. This is tomorrow or not? Yes, um, we can present this at the meeting tomorrow. It's at and I think I need to uh, actually send out an invite. Um, but yeah, we we're doing it at one thirty. Okay, so if you could create a Kanban, that would be even more awesome. But I don't know if that's if, if um, Eric, you can put more than, I think we need to have like two tasks in there at least to create a Kanban. Kanban. So if you wanna play around with it and put some data in, or if you guys wanna continue meeting after this and put some stuff in, I think we- Can you send me um, a link then in the, in Mattermost so I can edit it? Yeah, do you do you have in edit access to the Airtable? I don't I think so. Here, you right? created a copy for me once, but never gave me edit access, I think. Okay. And then if, yeah, important you feel safe, I guess, Vincent, that I don't screw up your work, so. <laughs> no, it's uh, you have <laughs> editor access now. Okay. You should get an invite in your email. Great, thank you. Uh, Jordan and Pete, do you guys both have the right access? Uh, I actually don't know. But... I don't believe so. Yeah. Okay. Um, Jordan, which email uh, do you use for Airtable? Um, this will be my maiden voyage. So you can just use the Lionsburg. Uh, I've got access. All right. Cool. Okay, yeah, I have to run, but yeah, Jordan, um, if you All click right, that thanks. link, then you'll be able to have editor access if you don't already. Okay, great. Great. All right, I'll see you guys soon. Beautiful. Thanks. thanks. Yeah. So, should we play around with this? <laughs> I, I've got a. You've got so a run I too? Probably stand for like five. Yeah, let, let's. Uh, you want to share screen? Jump in. We can. We can make yeah. it. We could make uh, four issues in a Kanban or something. I'm just so another that. another issue is uh, Meta Project needs a start page. Another one is we need a guidelines and uh, what is it? 
what you call it guidelines and document uh principles principles and guidelines document is that the same thing or that sounds like two things to me uh principle and guide yeah i think it's often named that way but it's like when you okay wait what i've seen as the best pra practice is to create a document that's like a a overarching you know the way document that then has all these things as a subsection so it, it ties the canon together so to speak yeah then um figure out the balance between task oriented project oriented and culture process oriented or something what's the short version of that Oof. Uh, uh, balancing culture, balance, culture yeah. process and um Culture and process, and uh, versus um, task project. Uh, yeah, balancing culture slash community versus task and project, something like that. Yeah, that's good. Um, and I'm going to not use versus. Thank you. Culture, community, and task slash project, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, so let's fill out more fields and then we'll make a Kanban board. Um, I'm going to do a terrible thing and just copy these over. Um, you don't need information in all of them, though. Um, uh, maybe right now we do. Okay. I will open my link if I find it. Then I can co add. Yep. <laughs> but I don't have it. Hmm. Hmm. Can you maybe did, did Vincent share? No, he he added our email. Uh, hmm? There's also a link in in chat. Okay, because if you click that. Mm -hmm. Oh, I have a good one. Um, although the 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 eating your tail ones are bad, maybe I uh, we need a. Um, we basically need a project charter for the issues tracker. Uh, mm -hmm. um, Is it possible in Kanban to have sub items to items? I guess not. I mean, um, vis visibly, it's possible. I don't know. In workflow, we did do it, and in uh Rome also kind of does it, but um I think okay, so there's a Lionsburg project, but not a meta project project. So these are these are meta project things. That's, that could be another uh, that could be another issue like need to disambiguate 
uh, need to decide how we're using Meta Project in Lionsburg as. What, Pete, you can, um, I'll just tell you how it's been kind of settling with me. I feel like Meta Project is, is what you were saying, like our open source, very descriptive, like hashtaggy thing that's a completely indefensible brand that could, we could never like set up a company or bank accounts or anything. Yep. And then, and then I think we could use Lionsburg as like our attempt to embody this in form with higher levels of federation where we can actually transfer resources and take in donations and blah, blah. And so I kind of view maybe Lionsburg's like a prototype where some of us are trying to live this out. You know, it's like a, um, an attempt to bring it to earth in a time and place. Yep. I think that so makes then sense. I, so I think these things then probably would become Lionsburg needs a start page and a principles document and blah, blah, blah. Um, and then what, what Lionsburg could do is we could just signal those out to anybody else who thinks they're part of the meta project saying, Hey, everybody's welcome to adopt these or not or whatever, but here's what we're doing in our little attempt to live this out. You know, we have a group of people and here's the, here's what we did. Uh, importance for how need to decide when and how to use Lionsburg or Meta Project, high or medium. I think we should put a. This is importance, and then we also have urgency. So I can, I can, is high. Yeah. urgency is high. Medium. Bad when everything is medium and high. Um, um, I think I'm going to kill this field. So a date start date is not there yet. Can I add it? Yep. Uh, uh, this is actually, it's not start date, it's report date. Uh, report. Another um, hmm. field that I kind of like Pete is um, aging. And what that did was it's like, if, if there's an issue on there that's been aging for a hundred and whatever days, mm. they're like, so we had an inception date and just an aging counter. And it was kind of useful because sometimes people populate yeah. issues that. Are you, are you going to make a um, re report date? Eric, yeah, I'm doing I... that, but I'm, I'm, I'm wondering for report date is this, is the, is the right word for it? Um, it's working. Ah, okay. All of them are the same dates. What is report date in here? Is that the date that the issue was reported? Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's. I think. What do you say when when you put something somewhere? You the date that I submit. Submit. Yeah. Date. Date of submission, yeah, that's yeah. clear already. Maybe there's an even clearer. Or when was it added is even simpler, but yeah. Yeah, cre there's a created by field, so you could make a created on field. Or creation date. date. Huh? Yeah, created, created on and created by. Yeah, created on. That should also be automatic. Okay, so I've got to run in a couple of minutes. Um, I would, can, can, and then let's just say these are, we're, we're so close, but I just want to, I've never seen how to create a uh, Kanban table in Airtable, so I'm interested. <laughs> yeah. um, you can already create it, right? Without it being uh, finished? In terms of fields? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we would just use the Kanban. Uh, so then the, the columns are. OK, so, so we would need to go create new columns for the Kanban, I guess, right? Yeah, I get it now. It's like a, when it's a field that has 
where you can only choose one option, field. then then you can own, then you have yeah. the possibility to have it in columns. Yeah. I'd okay. almost, there's I'd there's almost, another um, another thing that we could. Uh, oh. Status. I would put it also in status, like the classical ones uh, to be done or, or to start. Should I create the status one? <laughs> uh, sure. Yeah. Let's I'll create the about... status field. Yeah. Um, status. Where is it? Status is here. Ah. Oh, what is the possible? There is already a status field. Ah, yeah. In progress, done. Okay. Uh, so, 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 real quick. So, what are what are the fields that we want this to group by on Kanban? Um, this is this is one of them. Uh, you know, this is a, an odd tangent, but let me let me look at a different thing. Um, it's like requested in progress and done, or so. Um, this is a project tracker that I have. Um, and there's status and well, let me look. So um, this this was built to be like a a um, a governing council looking at at projects. Um, so there's the green, red, yellow, red kanban, um, and then there's a a separate one, which is just a filter of all the red projects. So if if I'm looking at the the projects, I don't, or, or if I'm a you know a project management council, um, yeah. like a leadership council, uh, I don't need to look at all the details. I just need to know, okay, what are the red ones and what's going on with them? Uh, yeah. What are the red ones? What's going on with them? Um, a, a completely different one is uh, I I don't need to look at the projects that are are paused or in the backlog or zombie or anything. I just care oh, about yeah. the active ones. And then you can drag these back and forth during a uh, review meeting. So, so they, this is this is one of them, you know, okay, so what are the blockers? Sorry, the critical I'm not ones? I don't care about the rest. Your, uh, tell me again. Sorry. Jordan was yeah, so that's a few, that's a few, and then, um, as far as like a team prioritizing what they're going to work on, it's like you, you look at the totality of the, the features. Yep. And then it feels like there's something like a, whatever it is, there's like a backlog. And then there's a that. in progress. And then there's a done. And, and so you have that view of how things are, are moving through getting prioritized and moving through, you know? Um, this this set of there statuses go. is is good for tasks. I wouldn't use this for, for issues. Issues is just two. Oh, it okay. hasn't been handled I, I understand. or it's been yeah, a triage. Yeah, yeah, okay, I understand, I understand. Uh, I'm categorized, okay, yeah, now I get it. That's actually so in boxes, I'm this, categorized. I, I think this is the wrong statuses for issues, but we can leave it for now. Uh, you mean that the statuses that I define won't work that well? They're, these are these are exactly the ones that you want for tasks, and it's not the ones that you want for issues. Ah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm so used to saying that. Sorry. Okay. So <laughs> then there's there's one more thing, and maybe it's here. Uh, there's another thing which is just cards, um, yeah. uh, which is a different way to look at it than Kanban, but this this is going to be useful too. Yeah, very cool. Well, I, awesome, I, good work, guys. I celebrate. <laughs> celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Awesome. Um, cool. Well, that's exciting. Okay, and then Pete, were you, so if you um, had have any trouble logging into the website, let me know. Okay. Um, I, I I asked her to make us both admins. I don't know how to do anything, so it wasn't. But she said it. Uh, there was a, we'd have to upgrade the account, so she just put you on there. Okay. Um, for now. Sounds good. Um, just so you know, so you and Katie are the keepers of the keys. Okay. 
Um, I'm going to stop recording.